What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Kangaroo Black, coming back with the Week 12 recap. And, oh, boy, what a great week it was. But coming into this week, I thought it was going to be full of blowouts. But I was wrong. Every top four team had issues this week. The number five team, <laughs> we'll get to them later. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it and start out talking about this TCU and Baylor game. TCU got the win 29-28 on a last-second field goal, which they had to rush the field goal team on to, uh, to try the extra point. It was like 18 seconds left. They got on the field, got the kick up, and it, it was good. And the best part about it, everybody had time to be set for a full second before they snapped the ball. Good coaching right there. And I'm sure they had that uh, the field goal unit on the sideline together ready to go on the field. Because, like I said, they only had 17, 18 seconds to get set, get the ball snapped. Well, come off the sideline, get set, get the snap with no penalties. That's great coaching. So that goes to show you they practice that in, 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 in during the week a, a lot. So, but Tennessee got the win. Uh, not Tennessee, but uh, TCU. You can tell what I want to talk about, but TCU got the win. 29-28. They had 442 yards of offense, 115 rushing, 327 passing. So uh, Max Duggan, did his thing, 327 yards through the air with a touchdown. He also threw an interception. But uh, it almost came back to bite him. And I thought when TCU missed that, that point out to try the PAT, that that was going to come back and bite him in the ass, which I said it myself. That's going to come back and get their ass. It almost did, too. But anyway, uh, Kendra Miller, he had 41 yards passing on, on I mean, uh, 41 yards rushing on 10 attempts and a touchdown. Uh, Max Duggan had a touchdown, 50 yards on eight carries. So it's all good. And uh, the, the Mercado, a touchdown on 26 yards, eight carries. But anyway, like I said, they had 115 yards rushing. Everybody who had a carry scored a touchdown. Uh, I believe also, uh, let me see, Trey Barber, 108 yards. On five catches. Henderson scored a touchdown through the air with 52 yards on three catches. But uh overall, this 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 was just a just a great game. This was a, a great game. Baylor, they came in ready to play. I know a lot of people had picked Baylor to win this game. But uh anyway, Baylor put up 501 yards of offense, 269 passing, 232 rushing. So they was they was balanced. So uh, they also got 25 first downs. You know, in the first half, well, at halftime, going by the stats, you would think that Baylor was blowing TCU out. But TCU kept it close. They got a turnover in the first half, so they kept it close. So, uh, you know, Baylor, 269 yards through the out, touchdown, interception from uh, 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 Blake Shapin. Uh, Craig Williams, he had 112 yard rushing on 19 carries. Uh, Richard Reese, 56 yards on 10 carries and a touchdown. Quaylen Jones, a touchdown on five carries. He for 30 yards. And Kelsey Johnson, he scored a touchdown on the ground. Mm, Baldwin, 123 yards through the air on six catches. Josh Cameron had 68 yards on three catches. Those were the main two receivers for for uh, Baylor. But anyway, congratulations to TCU on a hard, hard-fought win. And I'm telling you, man, I, I love that ending. That's the way you fight, man. All right, let's move on to Illinois and Michigan. Anybody in their right mind would have not picked Illinois to even be competitive in this game. But they came out. They had the lead at one point. But uh, anyway... The first half was tight. Halftime, it was a 7-3 <laughs> lead for Michigan. I mean, who would have thought that Illinois' defense would hold Michigan's offense to seven points in the half? And, and then Michigan did score with three points in the third. While damn, uh, Illinois scored 14. 
So going into to the fourth quarter, it was 17-10, Illinois. So Illinois had a chance to win this game, man. Um, Michigan, 376 yards of offense, 208 through there, 168 yards uh, rushing. Both teams were successful on the ground. 148 yards for, for Illinois, 168 for Michigan. So the run, the run game was up to par for both teams. Illinois, 178 yards through the air, Michigan, 208. So, it's, it's, it's this, this game, I mean, I just thought Michigan was going to blow Illinois out the water. Now, J.J. McCarthy, 208 yards. He didn't throw in a touchdown, no interceptions, so that's good. Blake Corum, 108 yards and a touchdown. He went out during the game. Uh, don't know the severity of his injury, but he got a knee injury. But uh, they're going to need uh, Corum. They're really going to need him against uh, Ohio State. So uh, they, they, they better get, get it right. Uh, C.J. Stokes didn't do too much, 36 yards rushing on 11 carries. But those, Blake Corn was the main guy, which he should be. As far as passing, they didn't have, no, Michigan didn't have nobody over 50 yards. Loveland, he had 50 yards on three catches. Running Bell, 44 yards on three catches. Everybody else, man, 39 yards, 38 yards, 24 yards. So, but anyway. Uh, Illinois, uh, DeVito, 178 yards passing. No touchdowns. He didn't throw an interception either. Rushing, Chase Brown, 140 uh, yards on 29 carries, two touchdowns. So he did his thing. Other than that, for us rushing, he was the guy. Next closest to him was Williams with 13 yards. So null and void. But anyway, this game, this this was a tight game. Congratulations for Michigan for pulling this uh, win out, 1917, and once again a last second field goal. So I mean, hey, it is what it is, man. Uh, as far as this, these top four, a win is a win. All right, I'm going over the early games. Talk about uh, my Alabama Crimson Tide. We got the win against Austin P, 34 to nothing, which we should have beat. Beat them way worse than that. Like I said in my video, we usually beat these guys like 55 nothing. A team like this, 55 nothing, freaking 63 nothing, 63-3, stuff like that. But this time, only 34 yards. I mean, uh, 34 points coming out of this Alabama team. And guess what? It didn't come with the same issues we always have. The, the, the past... Offensive line on the passing plays, they couldn't block for Bryce. Receivers still can't get separation. Drop balls. Had some few penalties. Uh, turnovers. Same shit, man. And it's against Austin P. And our defense did not get to Austin P's quarterback not one time, not one. While while Bryce getting sacked three to four times. That's utterly damn ridiculous against a team like Austin P. We only had 17 points at half and scored 17 uh, in the second half. It, it's, it's just, this team, it, it, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Only good thing I can see, man, we, we had some new guys. We played we played some uh, some young guys, I'll put it that way. Like uh, Trey Sanders, he got in the game which I think they should use him more in every game. Jamarian Miller got in the game. They need to use these two running backs. Seriously, man. Seriously, man. Kendrick Law, Tyler Harrell, Robert Outs, they got in the game and called a pass, albeit was one, one for each one of them. Emmanuel Henderson, Jr., he also got in the game. So that was good. We got we got to see a few faces that, uh, that we haven't seen. Jermaine Burton, he had his best game. Uh, of the season with 128 yards receiving, two touchdowns on seven catches. So that was his best game, although it came against Austin P. Jason McClellan had his best game of the season, 156 yards, two touchdowns on 17 carries. So he had his best best uh, game. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, he didn't play. He was in street clothes. So uh, he should be back next week. Rodell Williams, 51 yards on 10 carries. Like I say, Jamarian Miller, he didn't get a lot more playing time, man. A lot more playing time. But anyway, the defense, 
Uh, we did get, I think we got four turnovers, three interceptions and a fumble. Brian Branch, two interceptions, and, and Kool-Aid McKinstra had, a, had an interception. But uh, we, our front ship seven should have been dominating freaking uh, uh, Austin Peay's front seven. But, like I say, didn't touch Austin Peay's quarterback. Utterly ridiculous. And, and Bill O'Brien, I keep saying it, he got to go. You can't score with 17 points and a half against Austin P. We should have had at least had 31 points. And, and and our defense, we was giving up plays. We was giving up plays. Pete go need to go too. Because if you're being real about it, Austin P should have had 10 points. At, at well, at least six points in the in the uh in the first half. We should have went in seven with a 17-6 lead at halftime. All right, they could have got two field goals. They missed one, and the other one, they just went for it on fourth down. They didn't get it, which they it should have been a penalty. So it could have been 17-10 at the half. They missed the holding call on Henry Toll Toll in the end zone. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, man, this this team is just sad. But anyway, we got the win. That that that's that's the only good good part about this shit, man. We put up 527 yards of offense, which is good. 263 on the ground, 264 in the air. So, quite balanced. We picked up 27 first downs, man. So, and I uh, held them to three of 13 on on uh, third down, but still, it, it still was sad, man. And I uh, held uh, also Peter on the 206 total yards, 59 rushing, 147 through the air. But uh, it, it, it still wasn't a good performance by Alabama. But, hey. They got the win. So moving on, let's talk about uh, mm, I'm gonna bring. Let's talk about Kentucky and uh, Georgia. Georgia got the win, 16-6. Stetson Bennett, he didn't have a good game at all, at all. So, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. He threw an interception. I don't know what the hell he was looking at. Really, Kentucky couldn't get nothing going all game. Nothing. Uh, Kalen Ringo had an interception. Uh, so, easy interception. But he got uh, beat on the play uh, before that also in the first half. But uh, Kentucky got, I mean, uh, George got the win 16-6. Ain't too much to talk about this game other than the weather played. There's no excuse, but the weather played had an, uh, uh, an effect on this game. Cold and windy, so it is what it is. Kenny McIntosh, uh, he did pretty good. So it is what it is. Brock Bowers only had about 10 yards. So they can win without Brock Bowers. I know a lot of people say, hey, Brock Bowers must have everything, even I said it. But they can win without Brock Bowers. Georgia got a lot of weapons, man, offensively and defensively. My thing is I just don't understand why don't they don't use Darnell Washington more in third-down situations because all you got to do is throw it up. He can get it. He's bigger, than, he's bigger than everybody on the damn field. I mean, I, I don't understand that, especially in the short. If you got third and five, just throw it in there. Over, he can get the damn ball. Plain and simple. You shouldn't even be thinking about Lad McConkey on third downs. Not too often anyway. Really, third and short situations. Third and four, third and five. Darnell Washington and Brock Bowles should be your main, your main target. Brock Bowles, first option, Darnell Washington, second, vice versa, Lad McCartney, third, <laughs> in, in that order, plain and simple. And you got McIntosh out the backfield. So, it, it just it does, it is what it is. But I think uh, Stetson Bennett, gonna re, he really going to rebound against, against Georgia Tech. So, I ain't shit to talk about as far as Kentucky. They didn't do shit. So it is what it is. So congratulations, Georgia. Uh, they just keep on trucking. We'll remain in the number one position. All right. Uh, Clemson just straight up killed, killed Miami. Miami didn't have a damn chance. No, I mean, damn. Didn't have a chance. Uh, so I ain't want to talk about that yet. Uh, Ole Miss got Molly walked by Arkansas. I don't know if Lane Kiffin mind is on on damn uh uh what what they call it Auburn, but they got Molly Watt yesterday. 
I'm sure everybody had Ole Miss beating the hell out of Arkansas, but that didn't happen. So it is what it is. Um, I don't know what's going on with our Ole Miss, but they got to get it together. It's, the, it's That's two losses in a row, and uh, they at number 14 now. So I don't know, man. Well, they was at number 14 yesterday after the loss against Alabama. But they might fall five, six spots, if not more. Plain and damn simple. Plain and simple. Uh, who else? Vandy. <laughs> Vandy beating up on damn Florida. I ain't even need to talk about no stats with Vandy in Florida. Florida should be ashamed of themselves, along with Kentucky, because Vandy beat Kentucky last week. But 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 Florida should be ashamed of themselves. You got Anthony Richardson who put up 400 yards of offense in a loss, and you know Anthony Richardson ain't throwing for no damn 400 yards on, on against really nobody but Vanderbilt, and you still can't get a win. And then you need a fucking hail mary to win the game, and you just throw the ball clean out the damn end zone. Nobody had a chance to catch the ball. Nobody. How you do that? The game is on the damn line. You really, you wasn't getting pressured. And even if you was, just throw it up so somebody can catch the ball or have a chance at it. Jesus, man, don't throw it out the end zone. It's the last play of the damn game. <laughs> just straight crazy, man. But this, uh, the quarterback for uh, Bandit, that's a pretty good damn quarterback, man. Mike Wright. I don't know why they benched him from the beginning. The dude is pretty good. He can throw. He can run. I mean, damn. So, congratulations to Vandy. They won two SEC games uh, uh, this this season. Both of them SEC East games, conference games, I mean, division games. So, Vandy, Vandy they seem like they coming along. But uh, congratulations to them boys, man, for, for competing. In so, it is what it is, man. Uh, LSU got the win over. Over UAB, that was a no-brainer. Mm, but anyway, uh, who else? Who else? Who else we got? Mm, really nobody. But uh, Tennessee and South Carolina. <laughs> First of all, let me say, uh, I hope Hendon Hooker is all right. Don't know the severity of his injury. But it seems to me he probably tore ACL or MCL or something. None contact injury. So I hope he he's uh he gets better and uh recover from this injury. And uh I'm sure he'll be probably be a high first or second round. Well, he'll be a uh uh at least I know a high second round draft pick, at least if he don't go in the first. But anyway, uh South Carolina came in in this game with a damn vendetta or something. I don't damn know. that they, they I guess they wanted to prove themselves. I guess Spencer Rattler wanted to prove himself against a top-ranked team. And, boy, did they do it last night. Boy, did they do it last night. South Carolina was hitting on all cylinders through the whole game. The whole game. Scored touchdowns on, on their first five possessions. Five. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. This Tennessee defense couldn't stop nothing. I mean, nothing. Nothing. Uh, Spencer Rowley ended up throwing six touchdowns <laughs> to end the game. Oh, my goodness, man. The shit was ugly, man. The shit was ugly, man. Tennessee coming in the next year need to revamp their whole defense. Now, Hendon Hooker and, and number receivers now, they got Tennessee back in the game. I believe in the second half, they was only down by four points. But then, but then, Spencer Rattler struck again. The rattlesnake bit the ass more than one time. More than one time. Uh, South Carolina's defense wasn't half bad either. They was, they was hanging with uh, uh, those damn receivers. They had a couple of busted plays or whatever. What uh, I think it was, uh, was it Brute McCoy? Cedric Tillman was got hit down the middle for a touchdown. But other than that, South Carolina defensive backs played pretty damn well. They played pretty well. Plus, they had one of them guys to get ejected for the game for targeting. And uh, they still held their own. So Shane Beamer, Shane Beamer had these guys 
ready to play. I, the stadium was rocking. The crowd was lively. I mean, Jesus, man. Jesus, Tennessee. Jesus, Tennessee. I don't feel bad for you. And trust me, I couldn't be more ecstatic that it happened to y'all. <laughs> I couldn't be. But anyway, like I said, uh, Hen and Hooker, man, he, I hope he's all right, man. My ship uh, messing up, but it's all good. That's why I ain't giving y'all the stats in the game. But I'm sure I done, I done gave y'all enough in, in the uh, previous videos. But anyway, just know, I, I'm sure you all know, that Tennessee got molly Wap last night. I mean molly Wap. Josh Heupel, he couldn't come up with nothing. And I know these Tennessee fans talking about, well, what you fail to realize, this is only Josh Heupel's second season, and we 9-2 and two or whatever you will. I don't give a damn. You said the same shit when it was Butch Jones' second season, and we, we know how that worked out. Y'all start talking about brick by brick. Start calling themselves the champion of life or life champions. Is it going to result back to that? Since you want to say it's Josh Hypers, it's only Josh Hypers' second season. Bush Jones' second season was similar also, right? Yes or no? I could be wrong. But anyway, but anyway, we had some great games this uh, on, on yesterday. Top four teams, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and, and TCU all played great games. I forgot to mention Ohio State. Uh, they struggled, too. They struggled with Maryland, too. So, I mean, and they just let you know, any given Saturday, any team can be beat. But anyway, I'm going to get off here. That's my little week 12 recap. Great games. I beat down. <laughs> and I loved every minute of it. And this weekend turned out, weekend of football turned out to be a whole lot better than what I thought. So y'all have a good day. And I'll see y'all at uh, 730 tonight live. Roll damn tide.